Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today for the second session of Smart Research for the HSC. This is getting better results from your searching. I'm Julie, a librarian from the State Library of New South Wales. Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of country throughout Australia and to recognise their continuing connection to land, waters and culture. We pray our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. So in this session, we'll be seeing how some examples of topics can be searched more effectively. I'll demonstrate how we can locate many more relevant scholarly articles through using some particular tips and strategies in some of the popular and relevant e-resources for the HSC. So the State Library of New South Wales offers remote access to over 250 e-resources with a valid library card. You will need to apply and get a free library card to access these e-resources. In the previous session, my colleague has mentioned some ways you can identify and access the most relevant e-resources to research your topics. So there are two main ways. One is through the e-resources link from the menu. So we have a menu here in the right hand side. So I'm going to click on that and this is the State Library's homepage. And you can see under research and collections, there's a link for e-resources, but there's also a link for research guides and I'm going to access them through this way today. So these are specialized step-by-step -step guides with the most relevant resources for the HSC in a range of subjects. So if I click on HSC, there are five. One for ancient history, one for English, legal studies, modern history, and society and culture. So let's look at the society and culture guide to start with. Okay, so we start with an introduction and some guidance and under that we have finding books and other resources, but we're going to be looking at the e-resources. So e-resources, we can see a link for Australian journal articles. So we're going to look at one of those e-resources. So a really good one to start with is Informit. So this is, this is um, very Australasian in nature and it has um, very many scholarly articles in a range of subject areas, especially in the social sciences. So I'm going to click on this to access it. Now, when you're at home or elsewhere, you will need to put in your library card number to access it. But when you're actually in the library, you can, um, you can access it quite easily without putting in your number. So we're going to start by looking at uh, a topic. So the one I've chosen as an example is body image in teenage girls. So we can start searching just a simple search to see how what sort of results we get by just putting in those keywords. So, body image, and then I'm going to put in teenage girls as well. Now you'll notice I didn't put in the word in. So words like that, in, of, for, to, these are called stop words and they don't work terribly well in these e-resources or databases. So it's always good to just leave them out. So I've just put the main words, our keywords in there together. So if I search on that, I get 25 results. So that's not too bad, but it's not a great deal. So you can see that they look reasonably relevant. So we've got screen time linked to poor body image. And then we've got two of the same. So, so, so sometimes you do get these duplicate results because Informit has 
uh, a number of sub databases and sometimes you'll get them appearing in one or two of them. So you can see, that, so we really didn't get 25, we got less than 25. So we've got a few different relevant ones coming up here and I'm just going to look at one of them. This one's the body image and health related behavior of teenage girls. And that's in the Journal of Food and Nutrition, but it's, it's not a very relevant one, but we'll just have a look at how it's described. Now, this is a good tip. If you find something that you know, looks quite relevant, it's often good to see what subject headings or descriptors these uh, these records have. So you can see in here, they've used the word self-perception. So that might give us a tip on other ways we can describe the idea of body image. So self-perception might be another good way to describe that. And you can see they've also used youth, etc. So from this, we can get tips for how we can broaden our search and get more results. You can click on that, but it won't necessarily be in the context of teenage girls or girls. So what do we do now? We then move to an advanced search. And now we're going to combine words together in a meaningful way. And we're going to narrow each of those concepts down with this operator here that we can see, which is and. So we've got three boxes. And so we're going to start with our main concept and we're going to think of different ways to describe that con concept. And then we can find more results by broadening it. So how do we do that? So we'll start off with body image. Which now is actually put, and I'm now going to put the word or. You'll notice I've put it in uppercase. This is another operator. This is going to broaden our search to, for similar words to describe the same sort of thing. So we're going to put in self perception. And we can keep adding. We could do self self image. We could we could add more and more and more of those. And then I'm going to narrow it down to the concept of teenagers and girls. So we might want to put all that together. So I will put in girls or teen. Now now I'm going to put in what's called a truncation symbol. It's actually a asterisk. So we'll get teens, teen or teenagers. And another similar one is adolescence. And what I will do now is um, put another asterisk so we get alternate endings. So we could keep adding more like youth, et cetera. So we'll search on that. And you can see we now have a much larger result of 528. Now, some of these don't look particularly relevant because we've made it a little bit too broad, but we can see, if we go down here, we can see there are some quite relevant ones that we didn't pick up with our original search because we're now using some different wording. So you can see that some quite relevant materials are coming up now that we might want to explore. Another thing you can do to narrow down if you get far too many is to change your search into a subject field. Now, remember we looked at subjects before when uh, we looked at that first record. A subject heading or a subject term is like a hashtag. So it's linking like things together. So if I do that, you can see that's brought our search down again. And 
hopefully they'll be a little bit more, more relevant once we start looking into these records. So you can see young women might be another way of describing things. So you can get tips on to how you can um, enlarge your search results and get more relevant results as well. So that's one topic and that's one database. So what I'd like to do now is go back to our list of databases and e-resources and choose an international database or e-resource. So if I click on this listing, we will see an, another list of these e-resources. And the top one is Academic Search Complete and it is international. So we'll get results from America and Britain, Europe, Asia, etc. So this is scholarly full text articles. So we just need to click on that and it will open for us. And again, you see there's a simple search box and we have the option to do an advanced search. So just to compare our results, we'll start with a a simple search and this time our topic is the idea of sex discrimination in sport. So gender. Sport, sport. So again we could put that asterisk in if we like and I've left out the word in as I recommended so we actually got quite a large result here, um, 1,023 results. And you can see we've picked up some quite relevant results here, interesting articles, Journal of Sports Management. And there's a quite a long list of subject headings again. So we can see they're using sex discrimination in sports. But there's also another one that looks very useful, which is gender inequality in sports. So as we go down, we'll see lots of different ways to describe these different results that we've got and depending on what their main focus is. So you can see that our first search is quite good, but let's compare it with doing a more advanced search using those strategies that we did before. So we start with our main concept. So that is this concept of gender or sex, or if we're really focusing on women or girls, there's quite a few words that we can use. So let's go. So women or female, and we can have singular or plural or girl, singular or plural or gender or sex. And then we're going to narrow it down to only where it occurs with the concept of the sport. So sport or sports or sporting or perhaps we might look at athletics or athletes. So we bring that down to that stem of the word. And now we're going to narrow it even further with the idea of discrimination or inequality. So there's a number of words we could use here. Or we might want to be discriminate again, so we can bring that back to that stem. Stereotyping. Or inequality. Or even prejudice. So this is quite a complex search, but you can see that it's really looking at all the different aspects of that topic. 
So now we have over 3,000 results. And you can see some of these results that are coming up we didn't get before. But they are still very relevant. So you can see that by thinking about your topic, thinking about other ways to describe the same concept or the same words, different words for the same meaning, we can really find many more results and then work with those results to even make it even more specific. Now, this database has a range of results. Some of them will be newspaper articles, some will be magazines, but some of them will be very scholarly journal articles. So you can narrow that down. You could say, I only want the academic journals and that will update your list. And you can see that's brought the, the results number quite a lot down. And we can also ensure that they're peer reviewed. So peer reviewed articles, you know that they are written by experts in the field who um, an editorial board has uh, judged these articles to be worthy of the publication. So these things will all help you to, to know what type of resources you are working with. So that's, uh, that's a good example of how many other ways you can describe similar concepts. Let's move on now to a subject you'll all be doing, which is English. So that's in a different subject guide. So we're going to go back to our research guides. And this time we'll choose English. And again, we're going to go to the e-resources and I'll choose the aspect of prose fiction, non-fiction and drama. So we'll see there's a list of various e-resources that are relevant here. The one I'm going to choose is JSTOR because JSTOR is going to be a database or e-resource you will use for history, for society and culture, for many, and for science even. So it's a, a very multidisciplinary, but very high level scholarly uh, journal e-resource. So we can use it for English, but those of you who are studying history, it's also a great place to, to look. So let's look at something like the appropriations of a classic text. So let's choose Dracula and put in the word appropriation. So this is like other versions. And we'll search on that. And you can see we're getting some, some quite good ones here. quite a good search. But let's have a look now at an advanced search from what we can do here. Adding other ways of describing the concept of appropriating a work. So we can do Dracula in our first box and then we're going to start working on the idea of appropriations. So other ways to describe that are adaptations or retelling or retold or modern versions, etc. So I'll just work with that. So you can see I've got or in between these. And I've um, I have put the asterisk for some of those to get um, singular or, or plural, etc. So let's now search on this one. So we got a much larger set of results this time. And some of these look really useful. Some will be what we, re we returned before, but some of them we wouldn't have uh, got through our other original search because we've now used some other 
other terms to describe the same idea. So it's, it's about three times more results here that we can then work with. If there's too many, you could add another word in here like Gothic, etc., to narrow it down again. So this will work with other classic texts. You could put in something like Frankenstein or Othello, Merchant of Venice, Jane Austen's Emma, etc., to, to find appropriations of other works. So you can uh, then find what other versions, but you can see how many different ways to describe the same idea. So lastly, I'm just going to do a history example, just to show you that this database is also a great place to go. This one, this database e-resource is fabulous for historiography and extension history. So I'm choosing the topic of the Boxer Rebellion. So that again can be described in a number of ways. So Boxer Rebellion. And I'm putting it in quotation marks as I've done with some of the other terms. And that ensures that we know that's a phrase and the two words are there together. So another way of describing it is the Boxer Uprising. And sometimes events in history can be described differently, whether they're at the time or later. A good example of that is the First World War was called the Great War until the Second World War. But then it, it started being called the First World War because then we had a Second World War. So sometimes it all depends on when an article or a scholarly work has been written. So now we're going to look at the idea of the factors or the causes or the origins of that event. Or the reasons. So it can go on and on just thinking of the different ways that this can be described. So you can see these are all about the Boxer Uprising or Boxer Rebellion. You can see it's being described in both ways in different articles. So that ensures that you're not missing out on anything important. Okay, so with the little time we have left, I'm just going to go back to a research guide to recap some of those tips. So if I go back to a guide and I just click on e-resources, it gives us a good overview of what an e-resource is, why you should use them. But you can see here on the side, we've got some lovely tips. So use quotation marks for exact phrase searching and social. So a good example is social media. Use the advanced search, which we've just done. We've used and, and we've used or. We can use the asterisk for the wild cards, it's called, or alternate endings of words. And here are some other ways of refining or enlarging your search. So we've looked at scholarly or peer-reviewed articles and always remember to think about spelling because sometimes there can be variants for American spelling. So I hope that's been helpful and keep those, those tips and strategies in mind when next you are searching for your topics in these e-resources that the State Library of New South Wales provides to you. Thank you.